Hello everyone. This time around, I want to talk about hacking Hollywood style. Now, Hollywood tends to get hacking horribly wrong, whether it's simply uh, fiddling with the computer and doing something clever, or breaking into somebody else's machine or something like that. It they tend to get it horribly wrong. You'll see things like the hacker blasting away at the keyboard, and the faster they type, the better hacking they are. Well, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, the other thing you'll see is windows opening up in cascades on the screen. Well, no, that doesn't happen either. Although, to be fair, if you're doing things that fast on a computer, and some of the typing speeds they show is actually faster than the hardware can, can actually keep up with, you just keep that in mind, um, if you, you're operating as fast as they show these hackers operating, well, yeah, I guess Windows could be popping up and disappearing that rapidly. Uh, the question then is, how are they reading the contents of them? You know, and that's the other thing is, uh, how is the hacker keeping up with what's actually going on? Uh, you know, they're still human. They still are bound by human limitations. Still, the particularly good uh, computer operators can do things a lot faster than people that don't really know what's going on. And if it's stuff that you see all the time, you could recognize it much faster than it would take to actually read it. So there is some truth in, in that, but they tend to take it way too far. And they tend to portray that, that high-speed typing person, who's obviously a brilliant hacker, can break into anything. Well, unless the plot requires they can't. Right, so if that's not how hacking works, how does it really work? Well, it usually involves social engineering, hacking the people, calling someone up pretending to be tech support and getting information from them, and then, or maybe offering them a free trip to the Bahamas or something like that, get information from them and use that to guess their passwords. Or you do a bunch of research. Or you send an agent in to look under their keyboard and find the, note, the sticky note they've written their password on. Or any number of things like that. But it's not particularly exciting to watch. And it takes a lot longer to do. Which means that in the situations they set up in these shows, it means that the hacking that has to happen to win would be impossible. As a result, they resort to hand-wavy magic hacking. Uh, now, to be fair, it's certainly dramatic, and it looks cool, so there's something there. And depending what you're doing and what you're working your way through and how fast you're making progress at it, like if you're exploiting remote uh, exploits in things or something like that, then perhaps you would spend some time typing frantically uh, to get something done. Uh, that certainly is not impossible. But in the general case, that's not going to be what hacking into a remote system looks like. Uh, it's going to look more like Okay, yeah, okay, that got me some information. Now I need to look up what some more information so I can figure out where to go from there. So then you grab the mouse, click, 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 tapity tap, click, tapity tapity tap, click, 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 tapity tap. Hmm. Scribble, 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 tapity tap, click. You know, it's going to look like that, right? Who wants to watch that? Uh, so you could put through a bit of a montage of that sort of thing going on and then cut to the finished product. That would work just fine. And that'd be just as engaging as done. Um, 
My favorite has to be, though, a progress bar on how close to hacked you are. How close you are to getting in. Or, it'll take me 20 seconds to get in. Um, how do you know that? Anyway, uh, so hacking doesn't work the way Hollywood portrays it. It's much more deliberate. It requires much more thought and careful analysis and research in a lot of cases. Obviously, if you can exploit some sort of security flaw in the software running on the remote system, that would certainly be a, uh, a faster way in. And that's likely what these hackers would be trying first off. They'd be attempting the common exploits that are likely to be uh, potentially available on the remote system. So, you know, the initial start the hacking is probably going to involve, if they do this a lot, they're going to have a uh, package where they just load it up, run it against the remote target, and it hammers on it automatically with all of these remote exploits that may or may not work until it gets one that does. That might actually succeed in minutes or seconds. But while it's happening, after they've launched it, they're not going to be whacking away at the keyboard, getting this stuff going. Uh, they might be doing further research in case those uh, automated probes don't work. So, you know, they're not necessarily going to be getting up from the computer, but they're not going to be in the rapid-fire typing things mode. It's going to be more of a tappity-tap, read, click, click, read, tappity-tap mode where they're doing research on the victim, etc., etc., etc. And, you know, likely you're going to end up with a uh, montage type thing there, you know, a few jump cuts or whatever. And then you're done. They fade back to real time. Ding! Oh, we're in. Because something always has to go ding. It's necessary. There has to be a ding. Um, right, okay. So, actual hacking is not near as glamorous as Hollywood makes it look. Uh, and so you can kind of understand why they go for those fancy visuals uh, uh, and things. Uh, what is really, really wrong with Hollywood hacking, though, isn't so much the, uh, the blast typing and uh, all of that. Uh, you know, the faster the typing, the stronger the hacker, the more windows are opening, the more data you're getting, etc., etc., etc. Or the fact that any time a, a file downloads, it has to be opened and displayed on the screen, etc. Uh, you know, these things, they're not the most egregious problem. The most egregious problem with the Hollywood hacking and the magic computers they use is the fact that you can overload a computer remotely and send sparks out of the keyboard and fry the operator and blow up the house at the other end and that sort of thing. That can't happen. Uh, and you know what? No, I'm not going to qualify that. That can't happen. Uh, computers do not work that way. There is no mechanism to fry someone through the keyboard remotely. There's no mechanism to do that at all. There's no source of high voltage in the keyboard, period. So how are you frying somebody through their keyboard? It can't be done. It doesn't work that way. You can't cause the person's computer tower to explode remotely. There's no mechanism to make that happen. You know, if it's malfunctioning, say the cooling system's not working, you might be able to make it cut out, trip the thermal cut out, or maybe even catch on fire. But it's not likely to actually explode. And it's not going to likely do it in a manner that is going to be immediately deleterious to the health of the person using it. They're likely going to be able to escape whatever it does. It's certainly not going to ex make their house explode. 
Uh, if you've managed to hack into somebody's computer, you're not going to be able to make the lights in their house dim and flicker and throw sparks. Again, what's the mechanism for making lights throw sparks without burning the light out? Um, and on top of that, what's the mechanism for controlling the lights in the one room in the house? Unless the house has a remote uh, home automate, uh, remotely accessible home automation system, there's no possible way you can control the lights remotely. Um, you could certainly, if you hack the power grid, affect the power going to their house. But if you can get to that remotely, then it indicates a serious flaw in the uh, operations of the power grid. I'm not saying that those flaws don't exist. I don't know if they do or they don't. But a properly engineered control system for, the, for a power grid, say, will be completely air-gapped. There will be no possible way to connect to it from the internet. And if there is, I'm appealing to anybody running a power grid that can be connected to, where the control systems can be reached from the internet through any means, Fix it. Get rid of that connection. You don't want it. You don't need it. It's a security risk. Don't do it. Anyway, uh, so what's the mechanism for throwing sparks all over the place and uh, frying the person and some magic uh, electrical bolt coming out of the computer and throwing them across the room and uh, knocking them out for four hours? Hello, Arrow. Seriously? Anyway, what's the mechanism to make that happen? You need to think about that. Anytime you see these magical effects coming at, uh, happening on computers in Hollywood, as a result of hackers or not, you need to think about what's the mechanism to make that happen? Does that mechanism exist? As if you believed everything you saw on, uh, on the TV, you'd be terrified of your computer You'd be afraid that doing the wrong thing on it will cause it to explode. And it won't. Uh, if it did, there wouldn't be a lot of people buying them. Because people would be making those wrong, mis wrong moves all the time and computers would be exploding all the time. So <clears throat> think about what's the mechanism to make this magical stuff happen? And if you, if you think you have a mechanism for it, go talk to someone who knows how the computer stuff works and ask them if that mechanism exists. I'll give you pretty good odds. They'll tell you it doesn't. You should believe them. It probably doesn't. That said, if someone does get into your computer and they're watching you, they can certainly get into your bank accounts and all of that stuff. So, you know, don't be co totally complacent because some of the stuff they show is possible. So you need to think about that. Uh, things like webcams can be turned on remotely if you can gain access to that system remotely. So that means that once you have access, you can actually watch what that webcam sees you can listen to what the microphone hears, and you can watch what's on the person's screen remotely once you have access. So some of the stuff they show is actually plausible. So don't get me wrong, it's not everything that's totally bogus. It's just most of the most dramatic stuff is. It's right up there with the zoom enhance uh, gag with image enhancement. You've got an image and um, yeah, somehow you've got this grainy image and they can zoom in on a poster stamp size of it, zoom, enhance, whoop, you get a high definition image and you can clearly make out who, something, some, who is doing something and and you're going, well, if it was, if that was what was available to the cops, and you see this in police procedurals all the time, 
don't you think they'd be releasing better pictures when they need the public's help to find someone instead of those grainy security cam video uh, still frames? Those stills that they release on the news are enhanced as far as they go and still be usable. Like, seriously, if they could enhance it better, don't you think they would? So this zoom enhance thing is pretty nuts. Um, you know, it's so bad that Red Dwarf poked fun at it with it was zoom, enhance, zoom, enhance, uncrop. Huh? How do you uncrop something? Anyway, it, it's not that so that um, it's entirely unforgivable that Hollywood is doing this sort of thing. It's certainly more dramatic what they do. And I think originally it started out as a dramatization of what's going on for audiences that don't understand this computer stuff. And from those dramatizations, it sort of become a custom. It's a customary thing now. Kind of like the shing sound drawing a sword or uh, uh, certain... Uh, uh, certain types of fight choreography that make no sense but are used all the time. Uh, you know, like the people didn't bash swords against uh, sword against sword. They didn't want to do that. They were trying to hit the other guy. Uh, so they might use a sword to parry, but they're not going to aim for the other guy's sword. They're going to aim for the other guy, right? Anyway, there's um, plenty of uh, fight choreography that makes no sense, but it's just customarily done that way anymore. Uh, and I think the uh, fancy computer hacking gimmicks are, uh, are in that category. I don't think it's being done necessarily even out of ignorance anymore. I think it's being done just because that's what's done, right? Uh, anyway, some things do get it reasonably accurate and you can get a really good story from following the real limitations of computers and hacking and all of that. You just have to frame the story slightly differently so you don't bore your audience to tears. Like use a short montage, jump cuts and get on with it after the hacking's done. Make sure you don't frame the story so that the good guys don't have time to complete the necessary hacking. Uh, you, you need to uh, do something along those lines to make it watchable. But some things have done a reasonably good job. Even as far back as war games, they did a reasonably good job with the initial hacking scenes where uh, Broderick's character, um, I can never remember his name, he gets sent to the principal's office intentionally so that he can look up the current password to get in and fix his grades later. And later, when he's trying to get into the Whopper, he does a tedious amount of research, which is shown as a montage. And he, then eventually he finds a back door and manages to get in. Now, that sequence is probably a, substantially abbreviated to what it should have been, but at least it's accurate as to the methodology used to hack in. After that point, the movie devolves into magical computer land. Uh, but then, that's the conceit of the movie. That's the whole point of the movie, is the computer run amok. And, okay, good. That uh, you can kind of accept that, especially given that the lead-up to it actually makes sense. Uh, the TV show Limitless actually did a pretty good uh, shout-out to all of this stuff as well where instead of showing the tedious hacking, the, the narrator, uh, the main character, uh, told, uh, comes on and says, basically, yeah, uh, you know all those fancy hacking scenes in the movies? Well, real hacking isn't anything like that, so here's a picture of a dog instead. And then it cuts back to the hacking being done. Uh, so... Uh, you know, that was kind of a clever sidestep of the issue. Now, they did fall into the magical hacking uh, computer gimmickry in other episodes, but not so obviously that it, 
it detracts. And they did, he did throw up that picture of the dog a couple more times over the course of the show for just that reason. Yeah, the hacking's really tedious, so here's a picture of a dog. Uh, you know, uh, that was kind of clever. And it acknowledged that uh, the fancy hacking gimmick really doesn't work that way. So, you know, it, it can work uh, if you tell the story properly. Uh, and in the cases where Limitless does do a little bit of that magic hacking, well, it does actually make more sense in those circumstances because Brian, the main character, has usually been doing extensive research on the particular victim and he has a massive store of knowledge to call upon which helps him make the necessary associations to break in, to guess passwords and the like. And that's a result of the conceit of the show, the drug NZT, uh, which either lets you unlock the entire power of your brain, and, you know, other than the 10%, just the 10% that you use, which is a myth, by the way, you use all of your brain, or it just makes it more efficient. I did the conceit is uh, actually not as it's not the ten percent conceit, and not the ten percent myth that they use. Uh, the movie might use that, but I don't think they actually use it on the TV show. I think they actually uh, pointed out that the ten percent thing was false, and it was actually something else going on. Anyway, uh, so it's possible. And it does happen where they get the hacking much more right than most things do. But shows like CSI and NCIS and the, the, the procedurals and so on pretty much get it wrong all of the time. Uh, one classic scene in NCIS shows two idiots on one keyboard. Uh, McGee and Abby typing away on the same keyboard yeah that's as bad as it gets really anyway so Hollywood hacking and that was my my original point uh, most of what they show how it goes about doing it is totally wrong it doesn't work that way however the results they get in a lot of cases are fairly plausible. Like they'll get into somebody's bank account. They'll be able to create a bank account. They'll uh, be able to access somebody's, uh, you know, credit, uh, you know, access stuff on their computer, whatever. A lot of that stuff is plausible. Physical effects coming out of the computer and hurting people, not so plausible. Destroying power lines and burning houses down, not so plausible. Hacking into a computer through the power cord, definitely not plausible. Not possible even. Unless it happens to communicate over the power line with a specific device designed to do that. So, what it comes down to, most of the really dramatic stuff you see in hacking scenes, totally implausible. It doesn't happen that way. And anything that does happen, think about it carefully. What's the mechanism that allows it to happen? Always think about that. If these Hollywood hacking scenes are making you afraid for your life or afraid for everything, think about the mechanism that's allowing it to happen. Even if it's a plausible thing, like hacking into your bank account, what's the mechanism that makes that possible? And once you figure that out, or if you can't figure it out, ask somebody who knows this, uh, knows about this stuff and find out what's the way to guard against it. Anyway, that's my uh, rant uh, on uh, magic computer hacking for now. And, uh, well, there's probably a lot more to say on the topic, but I'm just going to stop now. I can always say more later. Um, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos, and if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.